Hello, everybody. Good morning. If it's morning where you are, good afternoon. Hopefully not good middle of the night for you. You might notice that we started a little bit early. That's, oh, oh, hi. Um, and we've just started early to say hello. So if you're joining us right at the, uh, at the time you're supposed to be joining us, you haven't missed a good thing. Uh, you haven't missed anything good. Oh, hey, good morning. Good vibes to yourself as well. That's a very, very modern internet greeting. Oh, wow. You know, I hope, I think we're on the same time zone. So I hope it's not too terribly early for you. So today we're going to have our very first session for the web development bootcamp. If you're just watching this on YouTube or you're just watching this on Twitch and you have no idea what's going on, you can go to classcentral.com slash cohorts slash web dev hyphen bootcamp hyphen spring 2022. And what we're doing here is we're teaching a completely free online web development bootcamp. And what we're going to be learning together is we're going to learn HTML, CSS, and how to put those together in functional ways. And that means stuff like accessibility, making sure people with different kinds of needs can see what you, you, you're using. And it's going to be things like visual design. Um, I'm going to be your teacher all through the six weeks course, but what you, you love the little clause, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting you started on these streams and then sending you off to finish on your own. Yeah, that sounds really scary, but it's not going to be so scary, I promise. What I'm going to ask you to do right now is if you haven't already, can you go to freecodecamp.com and sign up for a free account? Yeah. So just head, oh gosh, it's freecodecamp.org, isn't it? So head over to freecodecamp.org and sign up for a free account because all of the work we're going to be doing is in there, in that little browser, in the, in your browser, in this website. Um, and by signing in, you're going to be able to follow along with what we're doing. Don't worry about what you're doing when you get there because we're going to send you to a very slightly secret new way to learn. But just head over to freecodecamp.org. If you already signed up for Free Code Camp, amazing, fantastic. You're ahead of the game, but I'm still going to be bossy and I'm still going to be mean. If you've already signed up, oh, Raj is telling us that it's it's right around lunchtime in India. So, oh, you know what? Lunchtime is not a bad time to have a class, is it? Oh. Um, if you haven't already can you go ahead and we're going to be starting in about like two minutes, three minutes, a minute, um, grab some water or grab a cup of tea while we work. One of the big things with trying to learn is we learn better when we're comfortable, right? We learn better when we're happy. So ah, get comfy, make yourself as comfortable as you can to start learning. And you know what? We're coming right up on the time where we said we were going to start. Oh, a lot of you are, are saying it's very, very early where you are. I'm so sorry about that. Two in the morning, my love. So one thing I'd like to stress is if this is absolutely inhuman for you to join live, all of these videos are going to be available on demand on the Class Central website, I pro or Class Central YouTube, I promise. We'll put all of them over in the forums as well. But if this is just a horrible time for you, we're going to keep redoing these boot camps and we're going to move the times around. So right now the JavaScript one meets in the afternoons, European time, which is going to be a lot more of a humane time for uh, for many people in the Americas, perhaps. Oh, Ryan, Ryan's there from Sydney. Ryan, if it's not me being lazy, what time is it in Sydney? Because I tried to design this where it would work for, for y'all and folks in APAC. So, oh gosh, folks are saying it's 11 p.m. where they are. Oh, you all like learning way more than I do because I would not do anything at 11. <laughs> mm, it's very late. Let's go ahead and let's get you set up. Let's get, let's dive right into the core lesson just to make sure that those of you who are up way too early or way too late don't have to hang up, hang out too long. So right now we're at freecodecamp.org. Yeah. Oh, 6 p.m. It's... Whew, that's exactly what I was aiming for. Uh, 
And don't worry, if this is absolutely terrible, we're going to go ahead and next time we teach, I'm going to be teaching JavaScript. So JavaScript will be at this inhuman dot. <gasps> Fabio, what are you doing for in the morning? Go to bed. Um, so next time I'll be teaching JavaScript in the same time slot, which could, might be terrible for some of you, uh, where we'll put web uh, design in a later slot for those of you in the Americas. Brutal. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, right now I'm at freecodecamp.org and we're going to dive right in. We spent a little bit of time being sad about time zones. And the exciting thing, the thing I'm so, so hyped to tell you about is being a See, being a real programmer, whatever that means, um, you can start calling yourself a web developer, a web designer, as soon as we do one lesson, because you're doing web design, you're doing web development. And I think that counts as your teacher. I give you full and explicit permission to call yourself a web designer, a web, desi web uh, developer, or a programmer. But one thing I see common amongst programmers is we all hate time zones. And that's good. we're probably not going to get to that in this lesson, but time zones are so messy and so weird. So we're at freecodecamp.org. It's very exciting. Learn to code for free. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to be following the curriculum off of here. We're build projects, earn certifications. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to menu. And go ahead and follow along with me. We're going to come to the curriculum page to get started. Yeah. And just to warn you again, we're not going to do all of the lessons together. We're just going to get you started and then send you to finish up on your own. But you can always ask for help in the forums. Those of you who are just joining us on maybe Twitch or YouTube, um, hey, love, um, this is part of a larger boot camp. So if you want to join the full boot camp, I'm going to lovingly ask one of my beautiful assistants. To, my assistants are not only beautiful, they're also brilliant and lovely. They're just so kind and so sweet. I'm going to ask my beautiful assistants to go ahead and throw up the, uh, the link to enroll again, if you don't mind. So when we come to the curriculum, this is the first ha-ha-ha -ha -ha trick. Because you say, oh, we're going to learn responsive web certification. And you might think we're going to get this first one. We are not. I want you to scroll all the way to the bottom to this last box. So we're in the responsive web design beta certification. So beta means a release that's stable. What? This says stable. A beta is a version of a something in, in development where it's not quite completely finished. We're going to be some of the first people to use this brand new certification. And this is going to teach in a very different way that I was really excited about. So if you're on the, let's, let's do it one more time, real slow. If you're on the curriculum page, the learn cage for free coding, we're going to come all the way to the bottom. You think you want this, but you don't. We're going to come all the way to the last box and we're going to click on this beta one. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to bookmark this page if you're on a computer where you can bookmark something because you're going to be coming back to this a lot and you're going to be coming back to this a lot by yourself, not just with me. So let's come down and we're going to start by learning HTML, building a cat photo app. HTML is really the building block of what we're going to be doing all other web stuff with. HTML stands for hypertext markup. Hyper, H for hyper, T for text, hypertext, markup language. Whew. And it's the language we're going to use when we want to put content on our website or in our web app. So we've got 67 lessons for today. We're definitely not going to get through all of these together. But let's take a look. We're going to build this. Here's a preview of what we'll build. We'll have a big title that says Cat Photo App. A little title that says Cat Photos. We'll be able to put text and a link in. And we're going to put some photos. Oh, this photo looks like a link. Woo. We're going to have some lists. Cats love a uh, Garfield reference. <laughs> Look at this. So we're going to build all. Of, and we're going to put a form in. The form is going to be the hard part. And because I'm a mean teacher, you're going to do the hard part on your own the meanest teacher. So let's go ahead and let's have a look at this together. Let's maybe stretch this out a little bit more. Is that, is that okay to see? Yeah, we can see that. Okay. So 
HTML. One thing that Scott <laughs> Dewall is pointing out, hey, please do like and subscribe this if you want to be able to see these pop all the time. No pressure. One thing that we're doing now is we're working in free code camp. And free code camp is give, going to give me an opportunity to talk about a technical concept called a sandbox. And a sandbox, if you think of a sandbox on a playground, a sandbox is a safe place to play. Nothing too bad can happen to you in a sandbox. You can't fall off it. Worst thing happens is you, you eat a little bit of sand. Um, and that's a technical concept too, also called a sandbox. And Free Code Camp is a sandbox. And what Free Code Camp is, is it's saying, hey, we're going to let you write HTML, but we're going to abstract away. And abstract away means we're going to remove some of the complexity in real, in real world programming. Yeah. Um, oh, Chrislyn is looking for where we're at in the chat. You're looking for where we are in, um, could I ask one of my beautiful assistants to drop that into the chat, please? The, um, the, the link for the curriculum. Um, cool. If you can't access this page, it might be that you need to sign in or sign on. Yeah. Here's where we are. I'm going to go ahead and drop this into the link. Here's where we are. Here's the lesson we're at. But if you haven't yet signed up for free code camp, you're going to need to do that before we can get started. So this sandbox abstracts away some things. Usually when you're writing HTML, you're writing it in, a, in an HTML file. And your main file is going to be called index.html. I really appreciate that they've pointed that out here. Ooh. And we can take that away. We can put it back. And step one, HTML tags have opening tags and closing tags. And that's going to be something we see almost all the time. Sometimes tags are self-closing, and that's just to be mean, isn't it? But almost always we're going to have an opening and closing tag. So we're going to come to the console. Oh, does the same thing. Heck, heck, heck. Hmm. Let's restart this step. That's very strange. Find the H1 element and, so here's our step one, HTML elements have an opening tag like H1 and a closing tag like H1 with a slash. That's all chill. And right now it's telling us to find our H1 element. We've got it right here, isn't it? And we want to change the text between the opening and closing tags to say cat photo app. I think we, right now it says hello world, doesn't it? I think it would, we could delete that. Ooh, isn't that a bit scary? Isn't that a bit weird? But deleting code is one of the most exciting things we could do. I promise the more you work in web design and development, the more you're going to love deleting things. So here it says, well, we don't want it to say hello world. We want it to say hello, or not, not hello. We want it to say cat photo app. I think we might have done that. So here... In our little code box, we've got H1. That's cool. Yeah. And it says cat. Oh, here it says cat photo app. Also chill. Yeah, I don't think that link is going to work. I think this link might. Let's try this link. Does this link work okay for you all? Let me know if that one doesn't. I think this link won't work unless you're you're logged in at freecodecamp.org. I'm so sorry, my loves. So we've got this change to say cat photo up. And what we could do here is we could check our code. We say, well, we've got our opening H1 tag. And H1 is going to stand for heading one. And all of this will make, isn't that the worst thing a teacher can tell you? This will make way more sense. Yeah. But th this will be weird for a while, and it'll make more sense as we go. Yeah. Uh, we've got somebody asking a really good question saying, oh, are we going to take attendance? Absolutely not. So we're never going to take attendance. We're never going to come and fuss at you. You've got to be a little bit independent here. These lessons are just to help you as you go. Yeah. Step completed. This is said, hey, 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 y'all did a fantastic job. Everything's fine. So what happens next? 
Once we've completed the step, we say, well, we've got that cat photo app title we saw in the preview. We can go to the next challenge. Oh, we're already done with challenge number one. And we saw, we have H1 here. And really H1 isn't our only option. We've got the ability to add H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, or all the way down to H6. Yeah. And those are, they're going to be different sizes, but those are really the importance. So Raul's asking a really good question. So saying, hey, uh, how will we know if someone attended and get the certification? So the certification really just comes from finishing everything on free boot code camp. Um, you can come to none of the lessons and still pass and get your certification. Or you can like rush off all on your own and do them all. So really, these extra lessons and the forums and we've got some other stuff coming to, to be released later today for the bootcamp. All of these are just extra bonus things to try and make it easier for you to get through the free code camp curriculum and get your certification. So H1 to H6 elements are used to, to add header text. So heading one is the most important heading. And heading six is going to be not, not very important heading. Um, we've got somebody ask if there's a timeline. Absolutely not. This boot camp, so the extra supports will run for six weeks. But if you want to come back and finish next year or in two years or in three years, it'll be you'll be able to finish on the free code camp platform anytime you want to. So here it's saying we're going to add an H2 element below our H, uh, H1. And that's what we're going to do right now. So when I push enter, it gives us, yeah, so we're going to write the HTML code right here at the moment. Oh, Shari asked a really good question here. I'm going to say cat photos. And here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. Shari's asking, hey, what allows for the vertical space between the headings H1 and H2? And what I did is just push enter and say, I'm at the end of the H1, push enter, and then start on the new line. That'll be the exact same for you in the using the free code camp. And it's going to be the same way you would do this in a text file. Yeah. Just to preview what it'll be like doing it outside of the boot camp. Sherry's asking, are we going to receive certifications from Class Central? Nope. All the certifications will come right from free, uh, free code camp. We're going to check our code. Oh, and it says this is fine. That's absolutely fine. So we've got an H1, our most important heading says cat photo app. Our H2 heading says cat photos. And we can go on to the third step. Everything's chill. So we're on step three. And let's take a look at how this goes. So we've got three things going on here. We've got our, and this feels a little weird because we're actually in an HTML file, and it's putting us in different places here. Oh, wow, we've got a really good question. So a couple of different people are asking, are the text sizes different? The text sizes are different by default. Monica points out, okay, Monica points out they've got default pixel heights, but we'll learn later on in the course how to change those on our own. Um, if yours isn't updating, Go ahead and check check your code again. We'll, we'll go ahead and do a little bit of troubleshooting at the end of this. So we've got our HTML. And we'll learn about this later. This is where I'm just going to walk us through what's going on in this file. This where it says HTML, that's where we start our file. And we're letting our browser know, hey, this is an HTML file. And we notice this is an opening tag. So we're going to close it later. Here we say body. Say, this is the body of what we're doing. We've got our H1 started. And then I'll say cat photo app. And then we've got our H1 closed, all really useful. And then we've gone ahead and built our H2. So we say start our H2. And then it says cat photos. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create another element. We're gonna push enter, give ourselves another, another line. And we're gonna create a P element. P elements are super, 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 common. These are going to be any kind of normal text on your page, yeah? And here we're going to say click here. 
Ooh, it updates as we update. And we're going to give it the text. Click here to view more cat photos. And then we're going to close that. Cool. Yeah. Some of you are pointing out that this is a paragraph tag. Oh, gosh, you know what? This asked for a full stop, didn't it? I'm rubbish. If you are a little bit lazy, and I really want to stress, there's nothing wrong with being lazy. Being lazy is very, very good in programming. We could have copied this, so control C and then control V to paste it, but I decided to, to type it out. Um, I'm going a little bit quick through this. I'm going to stay on after we're done with the lesson, after an hour, and answer anybody's questions if that's okay. Yeah. So we're going to check our code. We're going a little bit fast just because, hey, did that work? Step completed. So we've started a P tag here. We've put our text here. And now we're closing our P tag. Oh, chill. Everything is mellow. So, ooh, this is one of my favorite things. Step four, we're going to learn about how to do comments. Comments, and this is something I'm, I like. You love how I'm just mean to y'all all the time. Comments are not very private. So when normal, when users are seeing your website, they won't see your comments. But if they click view source, if they right click and view source anywhere on your website, they'll be able to see these comments in HTML. So when you leave a comment, you want to make sure that it's it's not rude, that it's appropriate, that it's not going to be offensive. Yeah, don't leave a comment that would get you fired. No. Nah. <laughs> but a comment lets you leave a message without it showing up in the browser display. It can also, these are really useful because sometimes you want to add a comment that takes your code away. So you say, well, something's broken. I don't know what's broken. I want to add a comment. I'm going I'm to make some of this code inactive because I want to take that away temporarily and see if this is what's breaking it. We're going to create a comment above our paragraph element and we're going to leave ourselves a note. So there's our paragraph element. I'm going to push enter, but then come up to level five because it wants to be above. And I'm going to do a comment. A comment starts with the very same sort of Pac-Man, uh, the very same sort of, sorry, I forget I'm, I'm reversed. The very same sort of Pac-Man braces, the pointy brace. We start there again, but then we have an exclamation point. And you'll notice that so far, all of this is showing up. So when we made our first brace, that shows up in our preview, doesn't it? But as soon as we put that, that um, as soon as we put the exclamation point, our browser says, do you know what? That is a comment. I know that I'm not supposed to show you comments. And do you know what? The DJ guy is making such a good point here. I love this. And I'm just going to, comments are for programmers to understand and to follow for other programmers. Not just, I mean, you're, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying you're right. And so leaving comments for your coworkers or other people working on a project is really important, but sometimes leaving a comment for your future self is also just as important. If I'm going to start this website, but I know I'm going to need, going to need to come back to it in a month or six months. And I'm busy. I'm going to do a lot of things in a year. So what we're putting in our comment is to do, add link to cat photos. And this is a really good example. And we're gonna stop our, cause right now we've put this above our paragraph and our paragraph is done, is gone. I'm gonna close our comment and that brings back our paragraph. And let's talk about why that happened. So when this wasn't finished, it takes away. So right now we're saying we're starting a comment, but we haven't closed it yet. So our browser assumes everything that comes in the page after that is a comment. But when we close that comment, it says, okay, cool. 
the comment is just to do add link to cat photos. Oh, we've got a good question. What's the difference between a pre and a P and a pre tag? I'm going to go ahead and ask my lovely um, assistants to go ahead and drop the MDN links for paragraph and pre into the chat. But let's go ahead and save questions like that till the end, if that's okay, just so I don't, I don't lose you. We're going to check our code. What? What? Add link to cat. Oh, it's because it doesn't want the full stop. One thing that programming is super fussy about is that you've got to get it absolutely perfect. There we go. It didn't like I had a full stop after photos because it told me to only add this text. So I've gone ahead and fixed this. Fabulous. We're going to submit our code and go on to the next challenge. So yeah, if you're following along, you're going to want to start at step one and go through all of these, but it's going to feel just like this. So HTML elements have, so HTML isn't just, I'm going to add some text, I'm going to add some heading. You can also add tags that help you mark up the structure of your page. And when we talk about HTML that helps you define the structure. You'll often hear the word semantic. Isn't that a very, very fancy, kind of scary computer term? Semantic HTML. And it's cool. We can all relax. Semantics just means, just, just means that we're going to go ahead and make it that's carefully structured. Yeah. So when you hear the word semantic, it doesn't have to be that scary. So, HTML has some elements that identify different content areas. And we just had somebody, do we have to worry about indexing? Do we have to worry about HTML, uh, SEO yet, search engine optimization? And actually, when we write really clearly defined HTML, it makes it easier for search engines to find us. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify the main section of the page by hitting a main opening tag after the H1 element and at, we're to close it after the P. So here we've got our H1 element, and they've just told us that we're gonna start our main section here. That feels okay. But in HTML, if we start a tag, we've also got to close a tag. Oops, sorry, I'm just getting over being sick, so I'm, I'm very snuffly. And it says, identify the main section of the page, Scary, weird, but it just says, hey, 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 add a main tag after the H1 element. We've done that. That feels okay. And we're going to close it. And we close it by doing this that with a, with a little slash. Very chill. And we're going to close that here after the P element. That feels okay. Oh. That worked. Everything's fine. And if anybody's used free code camp before, this feels very different, doesn't it? The beta is very exciting. So HTML elements are especially scary because we can nest them inside each other. So our H1 element is inside our main element. And we can see that that's still true because we've got main right here and then h2. And one thing we could do to make our HTML easy to read is tab over. So we say, well, we've got our main element here. We want to make it easier to see. And we've got a good example of that here. So our main is inside our body element. So it's tabbed over. So it's easier for us to sort of scan and see, which is very chill. Here, the only thing it's asking us to do is indented by two spaces. Okay, I can do that. And we could indent this by two spaces. Our H2 and we did our page. We didn't do the comment, did we? We indent that by two spaces. Very chill. I think if we check our code, it'll say, hey, good job. All I wanted you to do was indent. We're on to step seven. And step seven is where things get tricky. I've been telling you, and what we've learned so far is, every time you open a tag, you have to close a tag. And that feels okay. But that's a lie, isn't it? That's a lie. <laughs> the 
because some tags are self-closing. And the only way to learn how to do these is um, just it, the only way to do it is to memorize it. I'm so sorry. Um, and sometimes you ask yourself, oh, do I have to close this tag? Is this tag self-closing? The two, there's a couple of things we can do when we don't know what we're doing. We can just try it. What happens when you close it? Does it work? So we can experiment. We can ask somebody. Um, or we can look it up. And the sort of dictionary online for HTML is called MDN. And if you go to, is it, uh, oh, can, some, can I ask one of my beautiful assistants to drop the link for MDN into the chat? MDN is sort of the encyclopedia for the web. So it'll give you, there we go, developer.mozilla.org. Um, I, I don't work for Mozilla, I used to. Uh, I don't work for Mozilla. I'm not trying to like sell their stuff to you, but but they are genuinely the best resource for what's this HTML, what's going on. So whenever you're not sure, looking it up on MDN is a really good way to do it. Um, and TJ is actually asking a really good question while I get settled, uh, which is why do we have to indent? And we have to indent, it's just for human readability. It's just easier for us to see what are the parent elements and what are the child elements? So what elements sit inside the other elements? And that feels weird, doesn't it? So we're going to come down and we're going to add an image element below the P element. Hmm. I think, so we're going to do this below our P element. And all we're going to do, I think all we're going to do is create an image tag. And that's, this isn't the best one, is it? Some of you who know some HTML are like, Jess, that image tag is not going to work. And I said, no, 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 I, I know it's not going to work. It's okay. But this is just to show us that the image tag is self-closing. We don't have to do anything else. To the, I mean, we do have to do other stuff to the image tag to make it a real image. But we don't have to do anything else to close it. Yeah. So HTML attributes are special words that are used inside the tag to control the element's behavior. Because some elements like H1 or P, all you have to say is the element name and it'll work. But an image isn't like that because it needs to have the SRC attribute after it. And here's what an image will look like. So you have the opening little Pac-Man you say image, which is our tag, but then you have to say SRC, and that is equal to, and then we add where our image lives. Whew. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing. Yeah, Leanne makes a good point that this is our source. We've got our image, source, and we're gonna set it as equal to, and these quotations. I'm gonna copy this, Control C, and I'm going to take it right down here with Control V. We've got a cat. We've got a cat. We've got a cat. <laughs> um, and don't worry if you're only catching half of this. All of these will be available later, either on Twitch, or they're going to be available on um, on YouTube later. So, oh gosh, and yeah, the course, the, the actual free code camp stuff. Um, so the, the link to the cat photo is going to be inside free code camp for you. I'm going to ask a kind of gotcha question here because I mean, here we're copying and pasting a cat photo. We're, we're copying and pasting. Um. We're copying and pasting this from somewhere else in the web. Why would that be a bad idea sometime? Why, why would I not want to link to something on somebody else's web page? And this is not a rhetorical question. Please let me know. Why would it be 
a little bit dangerous or maybe a little bit rude to link to somebody else's picture. Kamir makes a really good point here. Well, you know what? You don't have the copyright to that. Image. And that's true. Even if I just find it on the website, oh, you know what? The link might be broken. Lee's saying, you know what? That's plagiarism. That feels like cheating. Myra makes such a good point. The website might change or the link can break. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. And the web page is down. Something else is, oh, yeah. This one, the source can change. That's the big dangerous. If I have uploaded a picture on my website and other people start linking to it, I can change that picture. I can put up a new picture with the same file name and it can have anything I want on it. And then it'll just show up on your web page. You don't want to do that. So in general terms, you're going to want to upload your own pictures that you have copyright for. Yeah. But here it says free code camp. This says free code camp. We're, we're using somebody else's picture. But it's inside the sandbox. We feel safe, right? <laughs> Craig makes the, the perfect point. They could replace it with a puppy. Oh, that would be the most benign thing they could replace it with. So in general, only use your own images. But here, anything free code camps gives us is probably safe. We're going to check our code. And it says, good job. Everything's chill. You started your tag. You've got an image. You've got a screen. It's equal to. You've got your quotation marks. And then you close it here. Everything is super chill. We're going to submit our code and go to the next challenge. We're on step nine. And that sounds really impressive, but we've got like 70 steps to be finished with this. We're going to learn about an alt attribute today. And an alt attribute is super important. This is some text that describes the image. I know I've just asked you to tell me why you shouldn't link to images that aren't yours, but now can people tell me why alt text is important? Why do you want to have text that describes your image? I love this. I love all of you. Immediately, somebody's like, perfect for screen readers. Yes, screen readers are adaptive technology and folks who um, maybe have visual challenges or folks who need extra help with folks with different kinds of disabilities, folks using different kinds of, also is really useful for the, oh, so we've got accessibility reasons. It's useful for the visually impaired. Um, screen readers. I've got one that's not screen readers though. What's a non-accessible, and I love that you all jumped to accessibility, yes. What's a non -ex perfect Cindy, you're after my own heart. You know what, sometimes the image just doesn't load. Yeah. And and so we, we've got lots and lots of good reasons to use an alt text. So let's look at where it sits. So we've got image, screen, cat. And here, really, we can kind of put the alt text wherever we want. Alt is equal to, and we got our quotation marks again. We can use single quotes or double quotes. It doesn't matter as long as they're the same, right? Ooh, Samad, Samad makes a really good point. Actually, for search... It's also really important to have your alt text. Thank you. So we're given the alt text here. And this gives us a really good example of what good alt text looks like. We're going to copy this. It's a cute orange cat lying on its back. We're going to copy this. Oh, oh, oh. Command C. And paste it in right here. Yeah. We're going to check our code. And it says, good job. Everything's chill. We like this alt text. If I hover over it, does it? No, it's not going to show it to you. <laughs> so we can, now we're going to learn about links. And links are really the building block of the web. So Tim Berners-Lee, or Sir Tim Berners-Lee, he's a, he's, a, he's a knight now. I think he's been a knight for a long time. He built the web... Um, as we know it, um, a while, but actually, sorry, I'm very rude. I'm turning my back on y'all. Hey, um, if you can get a copy, I really like this book called Weaving the Web, which describes how the web was built. Uh, and it's by Tim Berners-Lee, the gentleman who 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 built the, the web up at CERN. And really what he was trying to do is said, was really about documents. 
and said, hey, I've got all of these documents on my computer. And really, these documents should link to other documents. They should be connected. I want to build a way to navigate connected documents. Cool, huh? Uh, we've got somebody asking if we could download the PDF. You probably shouldn't. Um, I'm not. I, I don't. Uh, but if you if you've got sort of a used bookstore by you, it should be really, really. I think I bought bought it for a dollar. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to pirate stuff, but I'm I'm also not going to not tell you. You should do what you think is right. There we go. <laughs> So really links are the most important or they're, they're really most the most fundamental part of what makes the web. And the, the tag for links is an A. And I like to think of this as an anchor. Let me go ahead and give you the emoji for an anchor. So it's a weird word. And I know a lot of you, English isn't your first language. Maybe it's not your fifth. Maybe it's not your sixth. Maybe you speak a bunch of languages that I can't speak. So, so go ahead and, and say, hey, an anchor is this big, heavy thing on a ship. And this is the anchor element as well. And when I think of an, using an anchor element on your web page, I think of it as throwing an anchor with a chain that links one page to another or one URL to another. And I think that makes it really, really easy to sort of, what well, easier, to conceptualize what's going on. So here, we've got our start of our we've got our A element, which is our anchor. And then we've got this new thing here, href. And this can be kind of hard to remember, but href. I like to think of that as the sound of throwing the anchor. So you you get your anchor when you put the A, and a ref is when you throw your anchor. The equal sign, this is where you're throwing your anchor to. You always need to have the quotes when you reference something. And then you go to httpsfreecodecamp.org. That means I get my A, I get my anchor. When I put the ref, I'm throwing my anchor. And here's where I'm throwing my anchor to. That means when somebody comes to the page, they can go to this link and follow that chain all the way to where the anchor sits at freecodecamp.org. Does that feel okay? It's kind of a, a weird way to describe that, isn't it? So we're going to create an anchor element after our paragraph. Haha. -ha. So enter to start a new line. We've got our little pointy one. A for our anchor. We're going to get an anchor. Pref for throwing the anchor. And where are we going to throw it to? We're going to throw it to, sorry, that was very excited for eight in the morning, wasn't it? We're going to throw it at, um, do you know what? What does ref stand for? Is it hyper reference, someone is saying? I, you, I'm, I'm looking this up in another window. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I, I believe that you're right, Samad. Um, but I just want to, I consistently have to look things up. So if you feel like you're not a real programmer because you have to look stuff up, no, nope, I look it up constantly. And Leanne is correct. Samad is correct. It is hyper-reference. Yeah. Sherry and uh, Anna, 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 Anna Anaxana are asking if we can use a single quote or a double quote. I don't care. You can use a single quote if you want to. You can use a double quote if you want to. Just keep them both the same on either side. Yeah. I'm going to check our code. Oh. oh, 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 yes, of course. Sorry. And we're not actually finished with this, are we? So I, and we've got a really good question. What's the difference between an element and a tag? So a tag... Let, let's go ahead and do this just because, yeah, so we want to keep our, our single and double quotes consistent. So an element, all of this, line seven, is a paragraph element. But this paragraph element is made up of an opening paragraph tag and a closing paragraph tag. Yeah. But both of these opening and closing tags and the content together makes the whole element. So the element is the thing on your page a single unit of content, 
whereas the tags are the, the individual pieces that make it up. So here, this is saying, Jess, don't you dare. You started an anchor tag, but you didn't close it. And to close it, we only need to do the A. We don't have to do the HREF. The HREF is just for throwing. We don't have to do that for closing. And this hasn't shown up on our page at all. So I bet we've got another step coming next, right? Right? Yep, you can use single quotes if you want to. It's no big deal. Everything's fine. Here, so I really, really want to stress that this boot camp is completely free. You can't pay me. There's no way to pay me. Please don't try and find a way to pay me. That would be weird. Um, but free code camp, we, so the people bringing you this boot camp aren't from free code camp. So my, my beautiful assistants are from uh, Class Central. Um, and I'm just me. I'm just a happy nerd. Free code camp is a separate project. It's a nonprofit. So if you only if you have the money, if I find you spending money you don't have, I'm going to show up at your house and yell at you. But if you do have some money free and you say, oh, I really want to donate to the free code camp project, it's a really nice thing to do. But I really want to stress again, don't you spend money you don't have. Do you know, if you really, really want to and you don't have the money, yet, wait until you're a fancy web developer. Then you can come back and donate. Yeah. So we're coming down. And you know what? Somebody... Uh, Sadiq pointed out, you know what we still need to do? We need to add the text that's going to show up in the anchor tag because right now we don't see anything. The link exists, but it's not displaying because there's nothing to display. So, oh, Paul is asking a really good question. We're going to do it in a second. Yes. So, hey, we have an alt tag for our images. Why don't we have an alt for a link? beautiful. You are brilliant. This is exactly where we're going here. Um, so we need to describe what this link is. And that's going to be the anchor text. And Paul's got it just right saying, you know what, we need something that describes this. And yes. So we're going to add some text. And the text is called anchor text. Yeah, cool. So the Anchor text is going to be cat photos. Can anybody tell me where you think we might put it? Where in line eight should I put the text cat photos? Mm. And this is going to be cheating because only the people who've done this before will have a good idea of this. I'm, I'm just making them do the work because I'm very lazy. It gives me an excuse to have a little drink of water. Where am I going to put the anchor text cat photos? Yeah. So in in between, whoop, how do I, in between the little Pac-Mans. <laughs> Perfect. So cat, and as soon as I start right typing this, A, it's, we see it down here, whoop, next to the picture, cat photos. There we go. So it's on our own line now. I'm not sure. Obviously, HTML tags are not people. I have no idea why I always think of them as girls. We're going to check our code. Everything continues to be fine. So we're going to turn the cat, we're going to turn the word cat photos inside of the P tag into the link. So right now, click here for more cat photos. And here it says cat photos again. Ooh, ooh. So what we're really going to do is we're going to wiggle. Yeah? The first thing I'm going to do is we know that this needs, that our link needs to be inside the paragraph tag. So we've got a good idea that that's possible because I am a programmer and all programmers are lazy at heart. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut and paste so that the paragraph tag wraps this link. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. If your link is showing up somewhere different, that's just fine. Once we go ahead and move the paragraph tag, it should come and sit with the rest of the paragraph. Yeah. And here, we only want it to say cat photos once, don't we? Because I am a programmer and programmers are lazy. I'm going to delete. And this feels okay, right? 
click here to view more cat photos. I've still got my anchor tag. I've still got my ref from where I throw it. And then I've got my link. This looks like it's okay, isn't it? I think if I check my code, oh, everything's fine. So let's keep going a little bit. Everything's going to be chill. And don't, for, for those of you who are just joining us on the streams, hey, my loves, this is actually part of a larger boot camp. So we're going to be getting started here together, but people are going to be finishing on your own. And what we're going to do is we've got forums and we're, we're going to be launching something else to help learners. So if you want to, um, I'm going to ask one of my beautiful, yeah, so we've got the forum there. Or you can sign up for the boot camp. I'm going to ask one of my beautiful assistants to throw the link for that in. Um, so right now, the code editors we're using are all here in the sandbox. So everything's going to be in your browser. Everything's going to be nice and friendly all over at freecodecamp.org. So we're going to add another attribute to our link. Right now, we've got our ref attribute set to where the link goes. We're going to have a target attribute as well. And the target attribute is really cool because we can set our target to um, dash and blank. And that means that our link will open in a new tab, which I think is extremely cool. And we can put that here just, just, to, just to make it easier to read. So target equals... Single quotes are fine. Double quotes are fine. You're mostly going to want to keep this. So somebody's saying we want to put this between the A and the R. Let's try it both ways to see. Yeah, an underscore is what you call that. <laughs> I was, did you see me where I was like, it's a lower dash. And and Marco's just like, uh, Manocorum is just saying, oh, it's, it's an underscore, sweetheart, which is so patient. Blank. I think, let's click on that. I think that's going to work. Oh, y'all can't see that uh, because I'm only sharing one. But I promise you that worked. <laughs> it opened the link at another time. Um, but we could take this target blank and cut. And we could just as happily put it here. And that's okay as well. Um, HTML is really fault tolerant, which is a very technical sounding word, which means it's kind of hard to break. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't always feel hard to break. We're going to test this. And it says, Jess, that's super chill. Of course, you could put it between the A and the ref. Or of course, you could put it after the, the link. Both of those are chill. I'm actually going to get rid of that space just because it bothers me. So right now, we've got our link here. I want to turn this kitty into a link. You think we could do this? And we've learned about a little bit, sort of implicitly about wrapping HTML around different things. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our image, which already exists. It's already perfect and complete. We've already got our image, our screen attribute. We've got where it links to. And we've got um, the alt text. What we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to take a um, anchor tag. Y'all just see me completely forget both how to do HTML and speak English, where I was like, we're going to panic. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap a link around that, shall we? So I'm going to start a tag here. It's going to feel scary and weird. I promise it's fine. I've got our anchor tag. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And we've got our ref. We've got where we're throwing that to. The single quotes here. I'm going to close that. Yeah. And we're going to send this to freecatphotoapp.com. And the way I'm going to wrap this is we're going to come down here and I'm going to close the tag here. So really what's going on here is let's, let's take a look at both links. This link, A, ref. And what this target blank does is that sends it to open in a new page, a new tab. Yeah. 
So we've got A, target blank, open in a new page, ref. And then we've got our anchor text here between the opening and closing tag. But then we come down here and instead of having anchor text, we have no anchor text. Instead of anchor text, we have an image. And I think that means that this is now a link. Isn't that cool? We're gonna check our code. Everything's fine. So we're only on step 15, which is super scary because you might remember we've got like 67 of these to do. And the big thing is we're just getting you started today. I'm gonna ask you to try and finish this on your own today. If you fall behind, it's completely okay. There's always time to catch up later. Everything's chill, I promise. And if you get stuck, we're going to be answering questions in the forum later on, I promise. Before adding any new comment, we should use a section element. Yeah. So remember when we learned about main? Main saying, hey, this is the main part where most of our comment content is going to be. But we're going to, we can create little subsections within that to sort of conceptually break that up. Ilya is asking if I recommend doing this boot camp the same time as John. It's going to be a lot of work, my lovely. I'd recommend doing one than the other. And I think doing this one before JavaScript is probably going to make more sense. If you try, that's a warning for everybody. If you try and do both of these, it is going to take up your whole life. If you're in a really good place right now where you're not working and you're not going to school and you don't have any, yeah, sure. But if you're like me and you've got a, a, a job, <laughs> <laughs> if you've got other obligations, that's probably going to be a lot. So we're going to take all the elements currently located in the main. I want to create a section element. So what I think this is telling me is I want to create a section element really inside the main element. We come on down. I'm going to close that right before main. I'm not telling you you can't do both, but I'm telling you, you are, you're going to be tired. Luckily, the gentleman who teaches JavaScript is so much nicer than me. That, that worked just fine. And all we did, let's come back up, is we added a section tag starting right before our main element and ending right before our main element ended. That's chill. So we're going to add a second section element before our existing section element. Okay. We know how to do this. So, so we've got a section element. All we're going to do here is create a new one. And I think that's going to be empty for right now. We start it and we end it. Everything's chill. Yep, we've got folks asking a couple different questions. And one is, am I going to teach the JavaScript one? Not this time. Oh, let's take a look at, yeah. We're not going to teach, I'm not going to teach JavaScript this time, but next time we'll swap. So JavaScript will be early in the morning. Um, and you do have to finish this on your own. So we're going to do just a couple more of these, but then after that, you're going to have to finish all, oh, you're going to have to finish so many of these on your own. Ha, 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 ha. I'm so mean. But the next section, we've got somebody, well, why are we doing section tags? I'm not sure how long this will take you. So we want the section tags because we're going to break this into different sections on the page. Oh, Kamira's is asking, what's the difference between a section and a div? A section's a little bit more semantic. I love this question. I love this. So a section is a kind of div, conceptually. And we're going to be learning about divs later, I promise. Section carries more semantic meaning than a div. So whenever you're going to use a div, and we'll learn about them later, I promise, don't worry. Whenever there's an option, a specialized option that's more specific, like article or section or... Always use that instead of div. Yeah. So we're going to create an H2 here inside our new section called hat lists. That feels okay. For those of you who don't know about divs or divs yet, don't worry about it. We're learning about it later on, I promise. So we've made an H2 here. Let's make an H3. And inside our H3, we want to say things, cats, love. I'm going to close our H3. That feels okay. Yeah. We're going to check our code. 
that's fine. We've got an H2 open and closed here. We've got an H3 open and closed here. And I've got about four more minutes where we're going to be working on these lessons. And then I'm going to answer anybody's questions. And we can go back and look at stuff. It'll be chill. The one thing I wanted to do is we want to add an unordered list. And we want to close that unordered list as well. And that's, so um, that should, yeah, that's working okay. So we've opened and closed an unordered list, but it doesn't show anything yet. Y'all give me four, four minutes and I will answer all of your questions, I promise. And the way we add bullet point lists is we open and close um, a list and then we use this list items to make the actual points. So we have our list here and it doesn't show anything. But when we create a list item, I'm gonna go ahead and close that as well. It should, it says, well, we wanna make catnip of our list. Let's take a look. Things cats love cat. Let's go ahead and look at this. Can you all see that on? We cannot see that on the screen. There we go. That's showing up there, isn't it? Let's try and give you some more space to see if that shows up a bit better. So we're going to add another list item. And you'll see as soon as I put the list item, that dot shows up, doesn't it? Down here. Mm, that dot, dot, dot does not show up well. Let's try that again just so we can see it. I'm going to delete that. We saw that dot going away. I'm going to make a list item. And as soon as I say LI, we see that dot show up, isn't it? And then I want to say cats like laser pointers. And as soon as I write that, it shows up. And then I want to close that list item. Because I'm going to make one last list item. Showing up okay? That's showing up okay. It's good to know that I need to make this a little bit longer in the future. Uh, and cats like lasagna. I can't spell. I'm going to close that list item as well. I'm going to check our code. And this says, cool, that worked just fine. We're going to take a look at the next one because I think we're going to be almost out of time for today. But for step 21, we're going to do the exact same thing we've just done, except for we're going to make a new image. So we're going to add an image just like we've done last time, but we're going to have it pointing at a slice of lasagna. And you're going to have an alt text as well that says, a slice of lasagna on the plate. We've got about a minute. So let's go ahead and sneak this in real fast. Yeah. So after the unordered list, so after this code here, I'm going to push enter. Oof. I'm going to make an image, IMG, remember, for an image tag, an SRC for the screen attribute, and quotation marks for where it's going. Remember that an image is a self-closing tag so we don't need to worry about closing these tags. But we are going to copy this and paste her here. Yeah. And we can see that the lasagna picture showed up. But we're not done yet, are we? Because we also absolutely need an alt attribute. And we need this alt attribute for people using screen readers or people using assistive technology. Or maybe just if this doesn't load. So here are alt texts, a slice of lasagna on a plate. That is all chill. Let's take a look at what's going to happen next. The figure element represents self-contained concept, content. So what we're going to do is just like we, we, we sort of previewed the idea of divs and we previewed the idea of more semantic information than divs and figure is like div, except it carries more information. And here it's saying, I want you to wrap your image in a figure tag. And this is going to add more semantic information. This is gonna say, hey, we're giving you 
an image. This gives you the ability in the next stage to add a caption, which is going to be super cool. But because I am the meanest teacher in the world, you are going to have to do step 23 and the rest of this on your own. Isn't that cruel? Isn't that terrible? So you're going to add the figure caption on your own. And then it's going to be a bunch of other work. You're going to have to learn the forms on your own. So we've got, and now is my favorite time because we just get to chill and I'm going to be super happy to answer your questions. So we've got a bunch of questions in here. Uh, let's, I'm going to cheat and answer the first one last and say, hey, is this daily? No, babe. Uh, so we're going to be running lessons Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays at this time. I'd love to run them every day, but I would burn out. I would die. You don't want me to die. I'm very lazy. So we're going to have lessons Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And we're not actually going to go through every single lesson. So right now, um, this first section has like 67 individual little lessons and we've only done 20 we've only done about a third i'm sending you on your own to go work on the rest of those tomorrow we're going to start a completely different section so we're just doing the first part on our own and doing question and answer yeah i i would love to do this daily but you would have to talk to my boss and be like jess needs six weeks off you need to you need to just give her the time because i gotta go work a proper job as well Uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to have some extra supplemental ones. So throughout the, the core boot camp, the stuff you need to do to get the certification is only in free code camp. But that's a little bit hard because that's not really the way you develop in the real world. So we're going to be having guests come on Thursdays and they're going to be teach. And don't worry, they're going to be at all different times, but we're definitely going to um, we're definitely going to keep those recorded and on demand, but we're going to talk about some of this stuff that free code camp doesn't teach. So we're going to have a session this Thursday about learning how to learn. So what are good techniques to learn programming? Uh, next Thursday, we're going to have somebody from GitHub come and talk to us about version control. Um, but we are going to learn some of the things around, mm -hmm. hey, what, what is file structure? What, what are these other things that we're not really learning in free code camp? Um, there is still going to be some research you need to do on your own about like, how does hosting work? <gasps> Which is big and scary. How do, how do I, but like um, the, the last couple of lessons in here will show us things like, um, I believe we're using code sandbox, uh, which will show us different ways to get a web page live. Yeah. Cool. So, yep. If you exit, I prompt, well, as long as you're using a modern browser, it should save what you've done. Um, so if you're in incognito mode or private mode on your browser, sometimes that can cause some problems uh, with saving your work. But in 99.99% .99 of the time, you can close free code camp and come back later and it'll, it'll be saved. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this book, cool. So... We're going to be working together for six weeks, but if you don't finish, your work doesn't go away. So this boot camp, we're going, to, we're going to move together pretty quickly. But if you fall behind, it's chill. None of your work will go away. Everything's fine. Uh, so is this boot camp self-paced or is there a last? Yes and no. <laughs> so we'll keep going, but you, your work is never going to go away. There's a lot of folks who joined us for the first boot camp who are coming back to try again, and that's super chill. We're going to keep doing these and they're going to keep being free. So there's no pressure. Cool. So we've got some questions about the quotes. Uh, so folks, a lot of folks are asking, can I use single or double quotes? Yeah, doesn't matter. Um, keep them the same. So if you start with this double quote, end with a double quote. If you start with a single quote, end with a single quote. Um, sometimes you'll have quotes nested within quotes and that's when you alternate. So, but we're not going to be learning about that till way later, I promise. Ah, uh, this one's a hard one. So is certification usually enough to get a job at major tech companies? Um, I think that this one by itself might not be. So I'd recommend, uh, I think that the equivalent of a big expensive boot camp would be to do web design, what we're doing now, 
uh, JavaScript, and maybe then the let's let's look at these together. So I think it would be pretty challenging to get a a job just with this one. I think that maybe if you've done this certification, JavaScript, and then front end libraries, that's when I'd start applying for like deadly serious uh, jobs. Um, it's really hard to get your first job in tech. I'd it's so stressful, isn't it? Because people you always hear people say, "Oh, it's so hard hard to hire programmers. Everyone's hiring," and I think that gives a lot of people. Uh, a false sense of what's going on. Getting your first job in tech, especially when you're self-taught, can be really, really hard. I think if you say, oh, I want my first job to be Google or I want my first job to be Amazon, I'd, I'd probably look at local companies first. Um, but after you get your first job in tech, getting your second job in tech is so much easier. I promise. And it's really unfair how hard we often make it. One thing I do want to point out is this boot camp doesn't have employer assistance attached to it. Um, on one hand, it's free. And on the other hand, we don't do a lot of work trying to match you to employers. So I'm really sorry. Um, so, you know what? This is super mean. But why am I apologizing? Um, if possible, could you please finish all of this first one? Can you please finish all of uh, Learn HTML by building a cat photo app? That's so much, isn't it? Isn't it? But please, if it's possible, if it's not, if you don't finish, don't worry about it. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at the basics of CSS, but no, no problems at all. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we haven't actually learned div yet, so I'm cheating. Um, but I can preview these. A div is just a box. So you're, you're building a box for content. And it's sort of a box. And this is going to get complicated because everything in HTML is rectangles. But um, a div is an empty box that you can put other HTML elements inside. And you might use a div to separate different sections of content. Or you might use it to style it using CSS. And we're going to learn about that tomorrow. But whenever possible, you want to use the most specific type of box. So a div is just a generic box, whereas main, uh, main's not really, so main is pretty different than div. Main needs to be on every one of your websites. And that's showing, that's going to hold all of your main content, all of the important content on your page. Whereas section is a little bit more specific. You say, well, you know, if this is a section of my page, not just a div, I'm going to use section instead. And then there's there's ones like article. We said, we know this is an article. Instead of just putting this in a div box, I'm going to put it in a in an article box. Um, so we're, this sounds super weird to say, but if you're really really curious about this, you could take a look at MDN and look up section main div span. But right now, I would just sort of let that wash over me. So we're going to get to that in a little while. It's not going to be super critical yet, and it'll be okay. <laughs> Sorry, that's it's a terrible thing for a teacher to say. If you're intellectually curious, do it. Go ahead and go look. But right now, it's not going to hurt you to, to not really understand all this. Oh, no, there was a really good question. Where did it go? Yes. Is it necessary to learn all of the HTML tags or just the basic? Do you know what? I could not even tell you how many HTML tags. How many HTML? Let's get ducked. How many HTML I don't even know. Okay. I, I don't know if this site's going to be any good. I'm sorry. So I've got to look stuff like this up all the time. Well, just tell me how many there are. Mm. Also, this, this page looks old. Um, so <laughs> you don't have to know all the HTML tags. I don't know all the HTML tags. Do you know what? I'm not even sure how many there are. Uh, but there are a heckin' bunch, if that's a technical enough term. Um, but no, you could just learn the basics. I don't know all of them. Constantly somebody asks a question. I'm like, oh, cool. Thank you. So there are either 142 or 132 tags. Thank you. I should have checked MDM first. I don't know all of those. You don't have to know all of those. You can absolutely just look them up. Um, 
Oh gosh, and we've got a ton of people who are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, you know what? When we were talking about the difference between main and div, um, legend, you're pointing out something really, really useful, and we're going to learn about this tomorrow. That div is a block, whereas span is inline, and that's not going to mean anything to most of y'all. But we'll, we'll we'll take a look at that tomorrow with the CSS. The difference between block and inline, yeah. Uh, but you don't need to know all the HTML tags. You don't need to memorize all of those. Um, I promise. <laughs> and if somebody comes back and says, well, how do you know? Because sometimes you'll be in a job interview and somebody says, here's a really obscure element or here's a really obscure thing. Why don't you know how to do that? You just send me to them and then I'll fight them. Oh, here's a really one. So, hey, we've already learned about the image tag. So what's the difference between the image tag and this figure tag? And that's a really good one. So to make an image, all you really need is the image tag, the IMG. That, that's cool. Why are we going to use this figure tag? And this figure tag is really useful for creating a, a section um, of content where you associate a caption with an image. So you might want to use the figure tag when you have a picture and then the text under the picture that you want to make sure is associated with it. So the figure tag is something that an image can go inside of when you want it to have a caption associated with it. Yeah, it's a really good question. <laughs> so, oh, oh, sorry, we both clicked it. I'm going to stop clicking them. <laughs> What's my, oof, my favorite HTML tag? No, this is going to make me a bad teacher. Uh, but my favorite HTML tag actually doesn't exist anymore. I'm very old. Um, so there's, you know what, we'll see if we can get somebody to come and join us from from the W3C. Because we, we had somebody from the last boot camp um, come and talk to us about the W3C. Um, this is going to be complicated. I'll go fast. There's a, a club of people who decide what happens with HTML and with CSS and with jobs. I mean, different, different clubs. Um, and it's the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. Isn't that beautiful? Um, and they make the decisions about how HTML works so that all of us can, can sort of agree on it. And sometimes they make a decision and then they come back later and they say, no, that was a bad idea. We, we shouldn't do that. Let's take that away. And that's when something gets deprecated. So that's when something gets taken out of HTML. I really love, there used to be a tag called blink that would make your text or your, or your image, or your, would make your content blink. And it was so annoying. I loved it. I have to confess that's my favorite HTML tag. And they, they absolutely took it away because I couldn't be trusted. <laughs> uh, span, so span is in HTML, but it's often important for CSS to style it. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> How far? Go as far as you can. If you get ahead of the class, then you can, if you get ahead of the class and you have time and you want to, it might be really nice to help other people in the forum. So go, please try to get at least two, number 67. Ooh, it didn't save my work. What have I done? Huh. No, it saved my work. That's fine. Um, just didn't display for a second. Go ahead and try to get to at least to number 67. Um, cool. So what time did the session start? They're going to be the same time, uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. And on Thursdays, the time will will vary just depending on it. If you go to the boot camp portal, there'll be a little bar on the... Wait, am I reversed? There'll, li there'll be a little bar on one side of your screen that'll show you all the, the starting time in your local time zone because time zones are hard. So what else is going on? Yeah, if you if we didn't get your question answered, go ahead, you could throw these in the forums as well. I'll be in the forums later today. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at this. Roger is saying that HTML is their favorite tag because it gives them a sense of accomplishment. Oh. And it's the closing HTML tag where you're like, I'm done. I love that. That's so sweet. Uh, cool. So how to access the forum. Uh, we'll go ahead and you can get to the forum by, where is this? Um, actually, I'm going to ask my beautiful assistant so I don't push at the same time. Um, can we get the link to the forum one more time? 
fabulous. So, oh, do you know what? I'm going to click on this because I want to encourage. And you've been coding for years and you still haven't gotten a job. I want to really assure you that that's, I I've just met you, so hello. But I don't think you're doing anything wrong. It's not your fault. We make it so hard for people who are self-taught. And we make it so hard for beginners to get jobs. I really want to encourage you, take a break when you need to, but don't get too discouraged. If you think, oh, is it me or is the industry really set up where it's unfair to beginners? I want to promise you that the industry is set up in a way where it's often much more challenging for people to get started in their careers than they need to be. Yeah, I, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm picking on you specifically, but I just want to be really, really aggressive when I say it's so much harder to get your first job than people say. Um, it's not you. I don't want to discourage anybody else by telling you it's going to be hard, but I don't want to be unfair by telling you. I mean, if it is very easy for you, I'm glad. So... Yeah, even if you don't put the closing tag of a paragraph, it'll still show your text. It just won't finish that paragraph. Um, it's another thing with HTML being really fault tolerant, where it says, hey, even if you don't close the tag, if I understand what you mean, I'll go ahead and assume. Yeah. So uh, here's a fantastic question, which is, is this boot camp class over for you? It kind of is. So we're just answering some questions. And for myself, I'm going to have to dip off at about five minutes to get some coffee and, and get sorted for work. Um, so yeah, if you're done, we're just answering questions. It's super chill. Ooh, yeah. So can you use an older version of HTML if you specify with doc type? <sighs> Sort of. Um, this is such a good question. It's and it's so weird. And I love a weird question. I'm, I'm not calling. I'm not calling you weird. Like this is just so. Um, right now, the HTML we use is HTML5 because there have been sort of five big chunky different versions of HTML. Um, and you can, if you're older versions of HTML, will still work. So the website I made in 1997 would still work on a modern browser. Um, Generally speaking, though, you could try and specify an older HTML version with doc type. Um, a modern browser is still probably going to try and look at it as though it's HTML5, though. If you're building a website today, I'd, I'd really encourage you to go ahead and write it in HTML5, which is going to be the HTML we're learning here. Um, it's going to feel pretty much the same. So I can't think of any benefit behind specifying an older version of HTML for a modern website. Um, yeah, I actually do. So if you can go ahead and, and move ahead. So I find that these uh, live sessions work better when they're reviews. Uh, but I understand that people get busy. So if you can go ahead and start into the second section, do it, do it, do it. But no pressure. Uh, so this one, there's not going to be an alternative timing for this. Um, JavaScript is in the afternoons. But yeah, there's, there's just going to be um, this time zone this time. Fabulous. Ah! I would like to teach you more about meta tags. Um, do we still really use meta tags in, in, in 2022? Metadata. So um, for those of you who've never heard of it, a meta like uh, communicates information about what this page is about. Um, but I think they're they're a little bit less popular these days. Ramon is saying, I think these are still used. Um, I'm going to cheat and because I need to get ready for work. Oh, good. Somebody's done that for me. <laughs> I confess, I don't often use very a lot of meta tags outside of specifying the, um, the, the type of text we're using. But um, these are still in use. MDN still uses them. Uh, talks about them um, and talks about the type of um, character sets we're using, 
or what HTTP or HTTPS we're using. That seems pretty valuable. And here's a really good example. Meta character set equals UTF-8. And that's really the kind of stuff I'd use. Um, I think back in the day, or back in my day, you used to see meta and then maybe some keywords next to it, right? I think that might be a little bit less, less um, popular these days. Fabulous. But I'm so sorry. I was about to say, I'm so sorry. I also have a job job, so I've got to go. You all have been an absolute joy. If you've got questions that I didn't get to, come and join us in the forums. If you're just joining us on the screen uh, streams and you're interested in joining the full boot camp, um, you can go ahead and find that. Where is it? Uh, you can enroll in the boot camp at classcentral.com. It is super explicitly free and everything's fine. Fab. I will go ahead and let all of you go. Oh, wait, homework, homework, homework. Um, if you can, go ahead and try and get all the way through the first section. But even more importantly, your homework for the rest of the day is to please have the most relaxing day that you all possibly can have. It's 2022. The world is very stressful. Get a cup of tea. Chill as hard as you can. Yeah? Everything is going to be... Everything is big and weird and scary in the world, but this is just programming. This is just HTML. It can't hurt you. Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to see you again tomorrow at the exact same time, and we're going to have another incredibly mellow day. Get to your homework, but also get to relaxing. Bye, all. <laughs>